Hey guys, this is Aaron. I want to take a look at an extension today that helps make what can be a monotonous and time-consuming process a pretty quick and easy process. That is the Medeek Truss plugin. So if you're ever in a situation where you need to go through and put roof truss framing onto a model, if you've ever had to do that before, you know it can be a lengthy process, a whole lot of components, a whole lot of pieces getting created, uh, and it's, it's not quick or easy to do manually. Medeek Truss plugin, however, really simplifies the process by automating the creation of the geometry of the trusses. When you install Medeek Truss plugin, you get two toolbars. The first one is the truss toolbar and has little commands for the different types of truss things you can put in there. Um, standard trusses, floor trusses, hips, rafters, uh, dormers. And there's a second toolbar that has some trim options. We'll look at that in just a second. Right now, I'm gonna go ahead and click the truss plugin to put some trusses onto this little uh, house I have here. Okay, first thing I want to add is just some common trusses in the front. So I'm going to click on the common. You can see you have a whole bunch of different truss profiles to choose from. I'm going to start with just the standard common truss. It's going to prompt me down at the bottom here to pick the front left corner. So the first truss I'm going to define, is the, I'm going to define the span of by clicking the left corner and then the second corner. That gives me, you can see, a real brief outline of a truss. Next thing it's going to ask is for the rear corner. So this is going to set the run of trusses, how far are these trusses going to run back. So I'm going to pick this corner here and click. Then it's going to prompt me and ask me for some information about the trusses I'm creating. It tells me things like the span, asks me for a pitch, I'm going to tell them I want a 612, and I can go into a lot more information here. I can put my cord sizes, that sort of thing. Um, I'm just going to hit OK with a default info. It's going to prompt me about some little additional information here, truss spacing, that kind of thing. Again, I'm going to stick with the default and click OK. That's going to give me a run of trusses. Now, here's the cool thing. What this did, not only did it give me this geometry, but it put it in a group, which is awesome, and it made these things into components. That means if I ever have a change to make for whatever reason, uh, if I had to come and add a vertical here, I could manually, if I wanted to, draw that vertical piece in here, and it's going to ripple through and be added to all the components. The other thing is, each of these pieces then gets created as a solid group, meaning that since these repeat inside of components, I could do things like right click, turn it into a component, and add attributes to it to report upon later. Pretty cool options, um, and like I said, the heavy lifting of inputting the geometry is done in just a few clicks. I'm going to continue through here and add some mono trusses here on this side. I'm going to click the truss button again, and this time I'm going to choose mono pitch. Come around to the other side, just like I did before. Two clicks to define the span, third click to define the run. And this time I'm going to say I want, I'm going to use the same pitch, 612. I am not going to have an upper overhang since it runs into the wall, so I'm going to zero that out. Click OK and OK. Then I get a bunch of trusses. You see that actually continues that roof plan of those monos across there. Pretty cool, pretty easy. And uh, I can do things too, like if I, say I want to put a hip end up here on the top, I'm just going to go ahead and click the hip button. And from there I'm going to choose, I want to put a step down hip. Again, three clicks. What's the span? What's the length? And you see it, it draws that preview as I move my mouse of what that hip's going to look like. Click. Very similar options here. I'm going to again just switch to a 612 pitch. Click OK. Same information here. I'm going to click OK. And I get a hip end. Again, a couple of clicks. It's real simple, real easy. I'm going to place another set of common trusses right here. Again, click, click, click. Stick with my 612 pitch and OK, OK. Now, if I want to do some editing to this, this is pretty cool. This is where this little utility toolbar comes in. I can say I want to trim to the face of this truss. This is going to be my girder. It's going to be holding up these trusses. So I'm going to click on this piece right here and then come around and say pick the end of that truss. Because these were components, the tails of all those trusses got taken out. I can do the same to the next truss down the line. Here, click here. Again, that one gets trimmed, and so did the one on this end, because again, they're components. One more here, my girder here needs to get trimmed back, my overhang. So I'm going to again click trim back to here with this, and again, both sides get trimmed back. All right, the last thing I want to take a look at real quick, I'm going to draw a line from the peak right here back on the green axis 
to where that would meet up with, there we go, the surface of these trusses. I just use inferencing to put that in. This is not a required step, but I found it makes it a little bit easier to input the valley with the valley tool. So I'm gonna click on valley set. Now it's gonna prompt me for a couple things. First thing is the plane of the main roof. So I'm just gonna choose the top of one of these trusses. And now I'm gonna click the end of this span and up to that ridge point I created to align my tool correctly. This is where I was saying adding this line makes it a little bit easier. Otherwise I gotta kinda try to figure out exactly where that is supposed to line up. With this point, I just click once, okay, and I get my valley trusses. Natively, the tool doesn't have absolutely everything you need to organize your row of trusses or move things around, but because it's in SketchUp, it's easy enough to select a profile and move it after it's been created. Now, disclaimer time. This tool is a geometry generation tool only. Don't be confused, this is not actually doing engineering. It will not tell you that creating this truss in this profile is going to hold up the unknown loads of your roof. So don't uh, expect this to be a full service engineering solution. If that is something you're interested in, I do recommend taking a look at the Medic webpage because he does have some information and some utilities for that. This tool is specifically for creating geometry, letting you do a layout and a 3D layout at that, of what trusses would look like on your building. Now we only touched on some roof trusses. There are utilities in here for floor trusses and rafters. So if that's something you're interested in, I do recommend going to the Extension Warehouse and downloading the trial version and giving it a shot. It seems to be well worth the $30 if truss layout is something that you're in the business of doing and it works really well inside of SketchUp. So there you go. That's the Medique Truss plugin for SketchUp. Thank you.